One of the projects that we have run over the last several years is something that we call the cost of conflict with communities. Uh, we've worked closely with companies, uh, particularly again in the extractive sector and in the infrastructure sector. Um, uh, again, the big physical footprint kind of companies. And we have been um, asking them to look uh, into their own books to find out what it's costing them to get things wrong. Um, and the results of that have been absolutely staggering, um, not only to us, but also to the companies themselves. Uh, you find in the oil industry, uh, for example, uh, the oil majors, uh, the amount of time that it takes um, to, uh, fr from, from the initial stage of where you get a permit um, uh, or, or a license to drill uh, to the time the first drop of oil comes out of the ground has doubled over the last 10 years. Um, the, the, the single most important factor determining uh, that is community pushback. They call it stakeholder-related risk. So we asked companies to look further into this. What does it cost you uh, because there is community pushback to your activities? What does it cost you because pipelines are being blown up? What, is it, what does it cost you because the only access road to a mine is blocked by a community a week or two weeks or three weeks um, at a time? Um, and the funny thing is that companies didn't really know uh, the answer to those questions because the costs are borne by individual business units down on the ground. They're never really reported as stakeholder related uh, costs or risks. They're never aggregated and so senior management never sees them. We, we had one company report to us that over the course of two years, this is an oil major, over the course of two years they lost $6.5 billion dollars uh, to stakeholder related risk. Uh, this was at a time when their annual profit was 20 billion. Uh, it, it, they hit the roof when they saw that and said there has to be a better way. Uh, can, can you help us identify uh, viable means uh, to, uh, to avoid these kinds of risks? And so the, the, the answer to the question that, that, that you posed, you know, why, why should this be of concern to companies is because it makes sense for companies to be concerned with them, with these issues, um, and, and because um, at the end of the day, it's also the right thing to do. Business is in business to do business. Business is not in business to harm human rights. Um, and I think when you put it to most business in, in that way, they actually want to know, well, how can I limit the adverse impacts that I have on human rights? And how can I increase the positive effects that I have on human rights? And so we've provided the tools for managing um, those uh, challenges by developing what we call a human rights due diligence process, whereby companies can anticipate um, what the adverse impacts um, of, of a project uh, are likely to be, um, help them develop mitigation strategies, uh, and um, at, at the other end of, uh, uh, of the process, uh, establish grievance mechanisms so that if something goes wrong, um, that doesn't require legal action, uh, but uh, does require a substantive response, um, then there, there is a mechanism available through um, a, a joint uh, process between uh, communities and companies uh, through which grievances can be resolved before they escalate um, into major campaigns by advocacy groups or into major lawsuits.